So the reason why you probably clicked on this video is because you want to add an extra outlet somewhere along your wall but you just don't want to cut up any drywall to run all that wiring or you probably don't have any crawl space access or attic space access. Well friends, I got a solution for you. Check this out. Hi friends, welcome back to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Just a quick disclaimer, my electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always make sure you're always current and up-to-date with your local electrical codes. Make sure you turn off the power from your circuit breaker before working with any electrical, and if you're unsure and uncomfortable with working with any electrical, please hire a certified, qualified electrician. With that being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get into today's video. This real life example mock-up that I built, you can see that I put a real outlet. We got real drywall, baseboards, flooring. I left it half open so that we can see what's going on later on and I'll focus the camera on there. But we're gonna put the outlet somewhere around here. So with our first step, we're gonna try to get rid of our baseboard. So when I mean by getting rid of the baseboard, I only mean that you only take out the amount of baseboard that you're gonna be running the wire to this outlet to the next outlet. So you don't wanna take out the whole run of baseboards because you're just creating more work for yourself. So most of the time, baseboards are attached by brad nails and caulking. Take your utility knife and cut along the very top carefully right across to the amount you're gonna be taking out. Now what I have here is a mini pry bar made specifically for baseboard removal. Carefully just wedge it between the baseboard and your drywall. Just take yourself a putty knife or a 10-in-1 tool, place it right behind it, and use that so that you can protect the drywall while you're trying to pry this out. I'm gonna come across these little brad nails. Now you have two options to remove these. You can either just clip them off, or just grab it and just carefully pop it out like that so that the front doesn't get any blowout. I'm gonna measure this baseboard, flip it over, and this is coming to about three quarters. Take that three quarters and I'm gonna subtract a quarter inch. I'm gonna transfer that three inches. So again, we wanna make our measurement smaller than the actual baseboard height. Now before you make that cutout, you want to check if there are any drywall screws under here. I just like to use my box knife and just cut this along the line. And if you're just taking out a small amount of drywall, this is definitely probably one of the cleanest ways to do, to do it. And now you're left with this opening right here. Now that we have our opening, now you can run your cable right under here. Notch the stud, the cable, right on that stud and put a stud plate right over it. Now the issue that's dangerous with this method is that when you put the drywall back and you put the baseboard back like so, go and hit this wire at the bottom with your brad nails. Now depending on who's gonna go renovate your house the next, they're not gonna know that there's gonna be a wire running on the bottom. Also that's dangerous is to say that your house floods. Now you have some exposed wires down here that could possibly create an electric shock. And I'm gonna show you the correct way to do it rather than this route, okay? So don't do this route because it's just too risky. And let me show you how risky it is. Let me go run some brad nails on this one. Depending on the next DIYer or person who's gonna be renovating the house, putting new baseboards, there's a possibility that they don't know that there's a wire running there and they could possibly hit this wire. So definitely this is not a safe method. So what would be the better and safer option? Well, you can go and drill the hole up above the stud a little bit higher than your cutoff line. This is just for demonstrational purposes only so you know where the studs are located. You can take your spade bit. Now this is a six inch spade bit and you can go it at it in an angle like so. Only problem with this method is when you're going on an angle like this, you can only go at a certain height because this pretty much bottoms out to the ground. The highest that you can put, drill that hole from above the floor is only up to five inches. But for example, what if someone wants to install higher baseboards rather than your typical three inch or three and a half inch baseboards and they want it higher, there's still a possibility that when they're putting that brad nail, they could hit that wire that's hanging or behind here. So the best way to solve that problem so you can get a higher hole level is attach this spade bit to a flexible drill bit right here. Now this you can pretty much manipulate, you can bend higher, 
to where the studs are. And the best part about this is that you can guide and actually put your hand for me, I can place my hand up there. I can go really high up above the stud to where I'm comfortable, where I know that I'm not gonna be able to hit that wire with the brad nailer. What you can use, which I use this a lot whenever I'm drilling through any wall so I know if there's anything behind there, is this depth stack endoscope. It has the light and the camera at the end and it connects right to your cell phone. You can position this on an angle so that you can see where that is going to drill on. You can stick your smartphone up there and use the camera on there so you can see where it's going. Get yourself one of these extension mirrors. This endoscope and all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave the link on the description down below. So also there's another option where you can get a smaller spade bit. This is a six inch. I'll leave the four inch on the description down below as well in case you want something shorter. Now you don't have to remove the wiring off this outlet. You can just place this on the side somewhere so it doesn't get in the way. Now if you have a metal box, it'll be a lot easier because you already have a hole or punch out that you can actually take out and put the wire through. But if you have one of these plastic electrical boxes, you'll have to open these up a little bit so it doesn't get caught. So widening up these openings with your needle nose pliers. If you have a metal box like this, it's actually a lot faster and easier because you have a little knockout clamp connector. Put it right through the wire. Make sure you take out this locket in place already. We're just feed through like that. You grab it and you have an automatic connection right there. Place it over easily accessible and now you got it locked in place that easy since this was just a small run i ended up just using my hands two studs should be no problem but if you had a longer run saying it's going to run through multiple like say 10 studs I advise that you go and use yourself a fish tape like this, feed it right through and pull it out through like that. It'll be a lot easier. Feed it through. So there you have it friends, we have our new electrical cable running from our old electrical box and old outlet that's now going to get fed onto this one, our new electrical box location that's going to be feeding and getting power from the old outlet. So now let's go and wire up the outlets. Check this out friends, the outlet that we're going to be using for this one is the Leviton Decor Edge. Now this is going to be the fastest install outlet that you can probably ever find in the market. It's pretty much a Wago and an outlet combined together. I made a specific video on this and tested it. Check out this video right here on the full test results. But uh, this is what I'm gonna be using for this one. It's pretty much all just levers. Inserting it on the back, just like this. Done. This outlet, I'll leave the link on the description down below as well. It's called the Leviton Decora Edge. Take out the sheathing. You can shove that in with the volt claw tool. Face plate. This is the easiest part. All you have to do is slide this back in underneath. Take your drywall screws. Take your baseboard. Place it right over and notice how the baseboard will cover that cut line from your drywall. Just like that. All you gotta do is caulk it. And that's it. 
you're done. So there you have it friends, that's the easiest, cleanest, and best way that you can put an outlet anywhere in your wall and running that cable if you don't have any attic, crawl space, or basement access. And again, all you gotta do is gain access behind that baseboard and notice that you don't have to do any drywall work. Now, if you have any suggestions or any tips that could have made this job a lot faster or easier, please leave a comment down below. And if you found this video super helpful and big value, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next video.